think that uh, here in the chat you can uh, make any comments, of, of course. But also there is a section for you to, to ask uh, questions. Okay, I will have that focus. Uh, 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 and I will be checking from time to time to see if there is any question. So the goal is not for me to just talk and talk and talk. And uh, let's try to, to do this in a more interactive way. And what I'm going to show is uh, functionality that is going to be included on the on the product. It's uh, almost ready. Okay, you know, you are a developer, so you know what happens when you demonstrate something. So uh, it's expected not to fail, but if it fails, we start over again, and that's it. Okay. So I'm going to start by sharing my screen. I'm going to share the, the whole screen, okay? Can you see it? I'm going to be focusing Visual Studio Code, okay? This is actually my development machine, okay? I'm using uh, the extension uh, running inside Visual Studio Code. And as Bruno was uh, talking about, the main uh, functionality that we are introducing in the next release is about uh, packages, uh, okay? That has another implications. Uh, one of them, uh, um, probably is the most important, is about the introduction of FNC components. So you can use them uh, in order to uh, develop your applications, but also you can write your own components, okay? This is important, especially in this uh, ecosystem, uh, because you can isolate functionality uh, into those components and create your own packages and things like that. Maybe you are used uh, to do that using Delphi and other products. Uh, um, but also, uh, we have introduced the ability to, to use workspaces. In Visual Studio Code, workspaces are, uh, just for you to understand, uh, are very, very similar to what can be a project group. That is, you can work with several projects at the same time. So what I'm going to, to start uh, to be showing is how you can create a new package, okay? For that, just click here on TMS uh, repository, and here you have a new entry, which is called TMS web package. If you click here, then you are prompted in order to uh, save the package one, the prog. I'm going to be creating here webinar okay i'm going to create a new folder for that package okay Oops. i'm going to be uh, naming the package new package okay this is the the uh, project file that is going to to store the the package okay Okay, this is the code of the package. And there is a tool which is going to be very, very helpful, which is called the project manager. This is a tool that is going to allow us to interact with all those projects because now you can work on several projects at the same time. I'm going to switch to see if you have any question at this point. Okay. Okay, so uh, this is our package that is stored on on our uh, folder. And now what I'm going to do is to create a new project. This is a web uh, application, the regular web applications you are used to, uh, both in Rust Studio and also in Visual Studio Code. Okay, it's going to be project one. I'm going to store this application. I'm going to be storing it in uh, another folder called uh, project, for example. And this is going to be called new project. Okay, this is creating the project. Just remember, this is my development machine, so it's, it may be a bit slower because this is the, the running product. Okay, it's the, the application itself. And this is the uh, unit one.pass, and this is opening the, the form designer. Okay, this is what you are used to. And now the, the nice thing uh, that you will be able to do with uh, 1.3 is that you can right click on the file explorer and you can add a folder to the workspace, okay? What we are going to do is to add the folder of the package that we created before to that workspace and you will see what happens, okay? Now on the workspace, we have our project and our package. So we can work 
seam seamlessly between both, okay? And then the workspace, remember, is very, very similar, the concept to what uh, can be a project group. We can save that workspace and we can save that inside, for example, the root folder, okay? So I'm going to be naming here new, new workspace, okay? So if we, for example, uh, show this reveal in the finder here, I'm going to show you what is the structure that I was talking about. Okay, this is the root folder where I'm uh, storing everything. And I have one folder for the package, one folder for the project, and this is the workspace file. So every time I, I open this workspace inside Visual Studio Code, it will open all the projects that are contained inside that workspace. Okay, I'm going to check if there is any question. Don't hesitate to ask anything, okay? Don't, don't worry. Okay, once uh, there is a workspace, the project manager shows all the projects that are inside that workspace or inside that folder. You can have several projects on the same folder. And if you pay attention here is highlighting what project is considered active. What that means that, for example, if uh, I run this application, uh, it will run this project, the one that is highlighted. I'm going to uh, change or toggle the screencast mode. Okay, so you see what are the keys that I'm pressing. Okay, so now if I press F5 in order to run this application, this is going to run the web application, not the package. Okay. It's compiling and this is running the, the application is empty because I haven't placed anything on the form. I will do that a bit later. Okay, and how can I switch from uh, this project uh, to this package? It's just right clicking and I can select activate. Okay, then this is going to be the active project. If I press F5 or I try to debug or I try to do anything, it's going to be uh, those commands are going to be directed to this uh, project, not this one, okay? Okay. So what I'm going to do now that I have selected the package, I'm going to create a new unit inside this package. For that, simply I right click on the package folder and I create a new unit inside, okay? It's named unit.pass, unit1.pass. In order to change the name, I simply highlight that in the Explorer, I press enter, okay? I'm going to be naming this, uh, I don't know, my new component dot pass, okay? As you can see, it has changed the, the name of the unit inside, as uh, you might expect. I'm going to be typing code here in order to create a new component, okay? But first, I'm going to just copy some uses that are going to be needed. Not all, not not of, uh, sorry, not all of them are going to be needed, but uh, are uh, very useful to to include them. Okay. Oh, sorry. Okay. And in order to register our component, uh, we need to add a new uh, unit, which is called design interface, okay? In Visual Studio Code, the, the, the code inside functionality uh, is uh, uh, very smart. And if you type things like this, it's able to filter uh, and distinguish between dots and so on. So once you get used to this, uh, it's very hard to go back, okay? So this is the unit that is going to contain the methods I'm going to, to need to register my application, okay? Now I'm going to be uh, creating a new class T my new shiny component and I'm going to inherit from the web label okay uh, sorry the label this is going to be oh, T web label this is going to be the the base class and I'm, go I'm not going to introduce any new uh, functionality okay any question no okay 
So in order to register these uh, components, so it's available on the form designer, what I need to do is to create here a new procedure that is going to be registered, okay? And as you can see, the implementation for this procedure is not uh, declared, so I can just uh, press Shift Control C, okay? And it's implemented and the cursor is, is ready for me to, to enter information. And for that, I'm going to be using register components and the first parameter is the uh, page on the tool palette that I want my component to be located uh, shiny and then I can pass an array of uh, component classes I want to register on that page in this case it's going to be t my new shiny component okay and that's it okay what I'm going to do now uh, if I right click on the uh, package on the project for the package I have several options the first one the first one is what I was explaining is to activate I can compile this okay but I can also install install means compile and then install the package that is produced and that will uh, show in a bit later uh, into the ID okay so I'm going to choose that option okay it's compiling no oh, uh, Oh, sorry, I'm missing a unit. I think it's std controls. This is why. Okay, we'll leave std controls. Okay, that should be working properly. To install. Okay, as you can see, the compiler has finished and the installing has been performed. Okay, so. Uh, along with this uh, new version, there is a new uh, utility. I'm going to use the component palette. And the new command is called install packages. I'm going to show uh, this to you. Okay. And this is the list of packages that uh, are uh, installed at this moment. If you click on any of them, uh, you will see what is the, the package uh, that is installed. And this is the description. This is the main one, which contains all the TMS web core components. These are the FNC ones that uh, Bruno will show uh, a bit later. And uh, well, this is one that I was uh, uh, creating before this uh, <laughs> webinar. So I was uh, checking everything was uh, pro um, working properly. And this is the one I'm, uh, I have just installed. Okay. So what that means that uh, when I close and I show the designer again, Okay, I'm going to be toggling to the designer for this unit. Then on the designer, there is a new uh, um, page. In this case, it's shiny, the name I was using. That contains my new component that I can perfectly click and is being added to the, to the designer. Uh, okay, and also remember the unit is also added, so I can compile with it. Okay, this is important because it's not only about getting that component into the form designer, okay? The goal is also to be able to, to compile with it, okay? So um, I don't know if you have any questions because, you know, this is more or less everything about uh, all the packages, uh, the workspaces. I'm going to be later showing what is produced when you uh, build a package. But if you have any questions, this is a nice moment, no? Is there any comment? Okay, in comments, there is a new question, which is called how to uninstall a package. Okay, I'm going to be showing that. In the install packages di uh, dialog or window, uh, what you can do, you can do two things. One is uh, clicking here on the checkbox in order to uh, disable that package so it's not loaded by the designer, or you can, uh, sorry, here at the bottom right, there is a button which is called remove. Okay. Uh, and ask you to remove uh, that package directly, okay? So this is the way in order for you to remove uh, packages uh, that you don't want. Okay, let's see what has produced the compilation of a package, okay? This is the folder of the package where it is contained both the, the unit and the DPK and the, the DPROG, okay? 
And uh, inside it, there is the TMS web uh, slash debug folder, which contain all the JavaScript that is being generated by the compiler. And there is a new file named after the dprog, but with the extension TWCL that stands for TMS Web Core Library. Okay. If you click on it, you will see that this is actually JavaScript code. Okay. Uh, so if you want to dig on, on it, you are free to, to, to see how this is working. And this is the JavaScript that is being loaded by the form designer and later is compiled into, into the application uh, for your component. Okay. When the compiler is translating all the Pascal uh, code to JavaScript, it will go in this area. Everything that you do with your component, and if you add new functionality and things like that, all that will be uh, stored uh, here. And this is the, the file that is being loaded by the form designer. Okay. Any question? Right. I, I don't know if you, Bruno, want to show about FNC or do you want me to show it or? Okay, okay. So uh, as you can see on the on the tool palette now, apart from uh, our components, you have here all the FNC components. These are the UI. This is the, the UI uh, ones, okay? And these are the DB ones. And this is the FNG, FNC chart, okay? So the, the nice thing about these components, okay, is that are uh, full cross-platform, okay? So you can use them right, right away on your FMX applications, on your uh, VCL applications, and now on your uh, web applications, okay? And uh, being inside Visual Studio Code, what uh, provides you is that what you see here on the designer is the actual thing, is the actual control that is being rendered in JavaScript. It's, the, it's not like a, a wrapper uh, that is VCL wrapper that is painted and things like that. And this is not the, the actual uh, stuff. And you have a lot of uh, different controls. Okay. For example, this is the planner. And they are very, very complex in the sense that, for example, they have uh, editors and, you know, they have uh, a lot of complex functionality apart from the TMS Web Core. TMS Web Core uh, components usually are more simple, uh, but this one uh, allows you to do uh, a bit more complex things. For example, this is the, the uh, planner. And there is another one, which is about the part. Oh, Okay. Okay. So as you can see, uh, these components are the ones that are going to get your applications to the next level. Because uh, to get this kind of functionality in, in the web world is quite complex, and TMS is doing all that for you, wrapping all this. And the nice thing is that using those components, you can uh, create web applications, desktop applications, mobile applications with the sing uh, with a single uh, class library. And there is no need for you in order to switch your mind in what uh, environment I'm working on is always uh, the same set of uh, components. Okay. And uh, for example, this is the the property editors that you can see here that you can use. This is the edit series. Okay. This is the FN, uh, FNC chart editor in which you can create a new series and you can customize all the aspects of. Uh, all the chart, the appearance, uh, about the, the layout, the position of all the elements, etc. Okay. And all this is coming to Visual Studio Code because of the new functionality uh, about packages. Uh, so we are very, very excited about this functionality because we are looking forward to see what kind of components you can build. Okay. You can, uh, if you get the FNC. Uh, class uh, library, you can create your own uh, FNC components and you can, you know, uh, even market those components and sell those components. Okay. So uh, we are looking forward to, to see what uh, you can do. Okay. Okay. I'm going to check 
in case I have the TMS and fancy package already installed, how to add this to Visual Studio Code? I don't know, Bruno, if you can answer that question. Yes, um, so the installer for the FNC components uh, will at this moment, of course, um, run uh, the Delphi compiler to install the components automatically in the Delphi IDE. It will at this point not know that um, TMS WebCore for Visual Studio Code is on your system. So that is something uh, that at this moment you will need to do manually. And how you can do that manually is by opening the specific package that we created for the FNC components for installing in um, Visual Studio Code. And maybe, Jose, uh, you can uh, open the folder for the FNC components, like the FNC chart, for example, where the all the code is for that FNC chart component. And uh, within that folder, there is now a new package, which is called, uh, if I'm correct, TMS FNC chart or pack web dot DPK. And so this is the package that you can um, open from uh, Visual Studio Code. And this is the package that you can compile and install from uh, Visual Studio Code. So in exactly the same way as Jose demonstrated for the test package with uh, the shiny component, in exactly the same way uh, you would do that to install the FNC components um, for Visual Studio Code. Actually, um, we have not uh, mentioned it yet because um, we are working on um, finishing a beta release for this uh, 1.3. We hope with a little luck uh, this week, but uh, we released last week updates for the TMS FNC components. And with that update, we have already included all these uh, new packages for installing in uh, Visual Studio Code. And as Jose found uh, that specific package between all the package that are included. And so yeah, the one highlighted here is uh, the one with which you um, install the FNC chart. No, that's the UI pack here. The FNC UI pack uh, that you install that in uh, WebCore for Visual Studio Code. So FNC uh, is prepared, is ready. Um, and the current version that you have already includes these packages. As soon as we roll out the 1.3 beta, it's just a matter of picking these uh, packages, compile and install into the IDE, and the components will become available on your um, tool palette. That is uh, the process. Not sure, Jose, uh, I want to add to that, that you have seen um, Jose demonstrated the FNC chart, one of the FNC chart uh, component designers. So um, we have also added, uh, of course, customizable design time support in um, Visual Studio Code. And we have modeled this after um, how you create your own component designers in Delphi. So that means that with um, identical interfaces, mm -hmm. your designers that you create for uh, Delphi um, will also work for um, Visual Studio Code. And that's why actually you saw the designer for the FNC chart, which is actually the same designer that you would um, use when you use the FNC chart from um, from your Delphi IDE. So that's perfectly uh, interchangeable. Another question I see here is about the TMS plugin system. Um, the plugin system is at this moment um, not something that directly ports to um, web applications. Um, it is based on uh, Delphi interfaces in um, with Delphi packages. And uh, at this moment, we 
do not have this for um, WebCore at all. So also not for WebCore for Visual Studio Code. Um, it might be an interesting concept. Um, I would say that we need to uh, reflect on that and also um, have a little bit of feeling if there is a broad interest in this uh, kind of concept for a web core application. I also, yeah, Jose? Yeah. Uh, there is another question uh, that says, assuming the resultant size is large, is there a method to compress the final project to make it w uh, more efficient over the network? Uh, what a TMS web core generates is uh, a web application. Uh, what that means, it generates uh, HTML uh, and JavaScript, okay? So there are many tools in the market, uh, like Webpack, for example, that uh, anything that you feed to that uh, tool, it will be uh, compressed or uh, even uh, like protected. This is something that we are already doing, that we are um, like uh, preventing you no, know, like identifiers and things like things like that. That uh, we are scrambling all, all that, so it's not easy to to see if you compile in, in release mode. Uh, but in any case, in order to compress the size, there are external tools that uh, can help you. Okay, so uh, you can get the size uh, smaller. But in any case, it's, it's quite uh, compact. Um, so uh, probably the, the gains are not going uh, uh, to be too much. Okay. Um, yeah, Jose, our when, when you compile in uh, release mode, there are actually two things uh, happening. First of all, there is uh, the past to js compiler. And uh, by default, this is configured to uh, strip out any unused code. And um, actually, you have to be careful with that uh, approach. I, so for example, if there is in a, a, in a class a method, with this optimization on, it will not include uh, that method in your final uh, resulting JavaScript application if that method is not used from your Pascal code. Um, so it will by default in this optimization mode already strip out potentially a lot of code. In addition, when your um, JavaScript application has been generated, was compiled from your Pascal code. An extra step is um, done, which is an uh, obfuscation. And with the uh, obfuscation, we use a standard, um, well, I, we, Jose, it's a kind of reference tool that we use for uh, this obfuscation, right? Mm -hmm. um, I What's the name again? Can you remind the name? Uh, I think it was named Terser, I think. Terser, exactly. Terser is the name. So that's the tool and it's a known tool in the JavaScript world for obfuscating your JavaScript code. And in our experience, um, in our experience, this results in something like 40% reduction in size of your final uh, JavaScript file. So that's that's a little bit. So yeah, the size is actually a two-step process. It's the optimization on one side of the code done by the past to js compiler. And the last step is Terser that is performing obfuscation. And this uh, gives you, on average, an, another 40% of uh, reduction. Mm -hmm. As you can see here, what I'm doing is to edit the um, release a build configuration for the project I was creating before. Okay, and here are the parameters that control that build process. So in release uh, mode, uh, by default, this is enabled. You can disable if, uh, that if you want, but in any case, they are uh, enabled by default. And this is what uh, Bruno was talking about, about the optimization and the obfuscation. Okay, and uh, what we are doing with obfuscation is a, an algorithm that is a standard. We are, we are using a library. This is not something that we have uh, uh, written. Okay, it's a tool that has been in production for many years and is still uh, used uh, with the goal of obfuscate JavaScript code. Because remember, what you are generating with all this is JavaScript code. Okay. And so, one thing that I want to stress. Um, 
that you might experience and actually be it in uh, Delphi or Visual Studio Code. Um, I'm telling it because we experienced it ourselves and we have been bitten by that uh, ourselves. is the optimization. Uh, if you create a uh, Delphi class method that is not used from your Pascal code, but uh, you have somewhere in your component a little piece of JavaScript code, as you, as you are most likely aware of, you can also easily mix uh, JavaScript code with uh, your Pascal code for creating, be it applications or components. But if you perform a call to a Pascal method from a JavaScript code block, that is something that the compiler cannot see because the compiler only sees the uh, Pascal code. And it would optimize out, obviously, that method that is called nowhere. And the, your JavaScript block of code will still be in your final uh, code that is produced and will, of course, perform a call to a method that does not longer exist that was optimized out. And of course, that results in an error. So it's um, that's something to pay attention to. Of course, we recommend that um, you use as little as possible JavaScript code uh, or mix it with Pascal code. But there are cases where there is something special that, that you want to do and, and you still want to use it. And so um, we have been bitten by that. And I want to give you that as an advice uh, when you start uh, writing either applications or components to uh, pay attention to that. Okay. Let's see. Does a package have uh, a debug and release target? Yes. I mean, they are actually like projects. Okay. So all the options that I was showing before, all the build configurations apply also to the packages. So you can tweak all these settings also for, for packages. Uh, a package actually is, is, is a project, it's an application. But uh, the difference is that uh, the goal is not to be a visual application. The goal is to become a library that contains functionality that is isolated and, and can be reused. And what the designer uh, does is to reuse that functionality in order to provide that into the form designer. Okay, so the answer to that is, is yes. Okay. Another question, sorry. Go ahead, Bruno. Uh, yeah, I see another question from uh, Michael. Uh, what kind of web server are supported and how is scalability and are multi-cores supported? Well, um, we are not really um, talking here or showing anything uh, code that is running server-side. Um, with um, TMS WebCore for Visual Studio Code, you create web client applications. That means that uh, when um, the user navigates to uh, the URL of your application, the browser will actually download your web client application that typically consists of an HTML file to start it all, and um, the JavaScript, uh, JavaScript file that contains the application. Once this is downloaded to uh, the browser, it is the browser that starts executing this uh, application and as long as there is no data or no extra communication needed there will be no uh, communication calls to uh, the server um, and that is uh, definitely i think an advantage that a lot of code is running client side and that means that the, your server load is uh, can be small can be little um, an additional thing to remark is that um, when you create such a web client application and actually the architecture of this kind of um, applications is a single page application. That's a terminology that is coming from um, frameworks like um, Angular or Vue or React that are based on the same architecture. And then an advantage is that um, this web client application is started, downloaded, executed from the browser. And as long as you will not change that application, that means that the second time or the third time the user will um, 
want to start your web application, the browser will typically find it in its cache. So um, that can um, that typically leads to uh, very fast starting times for your application um, as long as the application isn't changing. Another advantage of this uh, single page architecture application uh, architecture is that it becomes very easy for load balancing. Um, so there is no server side session state management in this type of applications because the state of your application is actually managed in the client itself. Uh, the server, in, in a normal and a typical case, um, your server does not need to do any state management. And that means that um, deploying on multiple servers and do the classic standard balancing uh, of several servers does not need to take any um, session management in account. And the typical problem with session management is that the server application, um, if you have multiple servers, that you typically keep the session state for one client application in one server and for another client application in another server. But um, when another call to the server uh, would be redirected to a server that is not having that session state that is introducing a lot of complexity for load balancing. But none of these issues are with this um, single page application architecture. And, and this is um, how um, web client applications with TMS Web Core are modeled after. Um, so I would say in terms of uh, performance, scalability uh, this is the easiest type of uh, application that you can uh, build for the web i hope this kind of answers your um, question uh, jose maybe you can show just um, i don't know maybe one of the demos or or just a very basic new application and see what it uh, generates. So the output of that application, where you can see that it will produce, um, that there is an HTML file involved mm -hmm. to uh, start your application and that there is a JavaScript application file. And that's actually the only files that you will uh, deploy to a um, web server and, uh, and, and you're up and running. There is uh, not much more to it. Mm -hmm. And that also means that um, with respect to uh, requirements for your web server, any server, big or small, that um, can do um, serving HTTPS uh, will do. And you will be able to uh, launch these applications from um, these web servers. So mm -hmm. Jose, yeah, I see you have already um, the output files, right? Yeah, the, the, yeah, these are the, the files. And for example, if you navigate here, this is the JavaScript. As you can see, this is actually pure JavaScript code that you can run anywhere. And for example, what I was, uh, what Bruno was explaining, what I'm going to do is to open a terminal on my machine, and I'm going to navigate to that folder here. And then I have here, this is a service, a simple uh, command for starting a, a simple uh, HTTP web server. I'm going to be serving that folder. And then if I navigate this URL, I will be uh, loading that application. I'm going to be creating here. Okay, and this is the, uh, for example, what I browse is the new project HTML. I'm going to be adding something to, to the here. I'm going to be deleting this and I'm going to be adding a button so at least uh, you see something and not a, an empty browser. I'm going to be the, deleting all this. Okay. Be adding a button. Okay. I'm going to be removing all this. Right now, if I build that project, yeah. 
Okay, now if I refresh this, oh, sorry. This is going to be running from here. Okay. So this is the actual browser that is offered by by the by Visual Studio Code. Okay. So uh, what this is generating is a store inside this folder. Okay. So I'm going to be testing this again. Changing the port. Okay. So as you can see, it's a simple folder where there is a javascript and some html's this is the dot map file this is just needed if you plan to debug the application this is not something that you should copy to your web server because it's considered like a uh, debug information almost like source code and this is produced when you are on the debug configuration uh, this setting is turned off uh, by default on the release uh, configuration and this is the html for the the unit that i was showing before and that's it. This is as simple as to copy this, the contents of this folder into any kind of web server, any simple web server, you know, Raspberry Pi or anything like that, will be able to serve all these, these contents. Okay, so I, I see, um, Michael, that you... Um, extend this um, understand this concept of um, deploying the html and javascript that uh, comprises your um, web client application then there is of course also the matter of okay how do we connect to a database we typically connect to a database through a rest api so the rest api is what you call from your web client application to uh, request or update whatever data that uh, you have or want to update. And um, these REST APIs are uh, typically stateless. So that means that um, there is no state involved with performing such an HTTP request, uh, such, such a REST API uh, request. And that means that you have the same advantage with uh, respect to um, scalability and load balancing. If you have multiple servers where on each server there is an, um, an REST API server running, um, these servers do not need to know about the other servers. And that means that the simple um, um, load balancer will simply see, uh, okay, which REST API server uh, can I use to uh, redirect that request to, and it will um, respond. So um, also there, um, there is not this complexity of uh, session state management that needs to be shared between uh, different servers. With respect to um, the REST API server, um, um, TMS WebCore application, is totally open to uh, whatever REST API backend that you are using. We have uh, ourselves the um, TMS X data technology that uh, allows you to create an, uh, a rot based uh, REST API backend for connecting to your databases. But there is at the same time uh, many other solutions. We have uh, customers who are using uh, Node.js as a, a backend, others uh, might use ASP.NET or uh, .NET Core as a backend. Um, we have a couple of customers who connect to uh, PHP backends. Um, even with, um, I try to remember the name, uh, DataSnap. Uh, there are a couple of customers who have developed or maybe had developed before something in DataSnap and used it as a backend or the Embarcadero Red server. Uh, so there are, I think, um, many different ways um, or technologies. And I think your decision might be based on what you already have developed in-house or the tools uh, you are familiar with. 
Um, and, and in addition to that, for example, uh, there is also cloud-based services uh, that allow you to create your backend. Uh, one of these, I, I think one of the more popular ones is uh, Google Firestore. And then you do not need to do any uh, specific server setup. It's all being set up by Google. And in uh, TMS WebCore, there's also components included for connecting in an easy way to something like a Google a Firestore cloud-based uh, database backend. At the same time, we also have uh, components for um, connecting easily to an X data backend. Um, so it's uh, as simple as um, dropping an X data um, data set component and in the traditional or I would say familiar way as you have most likely been connecting in a VCL application to a databases through a data set and a data source. It is the same mechanism, the same architecture that is offered um, for Xdata in this case, but also for Firestore and a couple uh, of others. So I hope, uh, Michael, this gives you an insight and um, answers your question. Um, I see another question from... Uh, I think I, I can take that one. The, okay. If you have been using the Delphi ID historically, are there any advantages to switching to uh, Visual Studio Code? Is it purely personal preference? Well, the, the first thing about Visual Studio Code, if you have seen on this uh, demonstration, this is uh, uh, macOS, okay, or Mac OS. Uh, that means that uh, you can uh, use your ID in a cross-platform way. You can, uh, everything that you have seen, it runs exactly the same on Mac OS, on uh, Linux, and on Windows, okay? So, for example, uh, many, many uh, Delphi developers use a Mac and use uh, Delphi on a on a virtual machine in order to create cross-platform uh, applications with FMX, okay? So this way you will be able to use it uh, natively on your Mac OS uh, without any problem. And the other uh, advantage uh, is that what you see on the designer here is the actual JavaScript control. This is not something that is happening on uh, uh, TMS Web Core in RAD Studio in which you don't get this kind of uh, feelings uh, with the because it's not the actual HTML and things like that. For example, here you can use templates, HTML templates, and you will see exactly what you are going to get when you run your application. Because here everything is uh, web technology. Yeah, the whole designer, the tool palette, the object inspector, everything is is web. Okay, so this gets the advantage for you that is easier for you to see what is going to be the end result when you run your application because what you see here is what you are going to get okay i don't know if uh, bruno has anything else to add uh well earlier you also pointed out um the difference with um, the um, code insight mm -hmm. in in uh, the editor mm -hmm. um i think Another nice thing is that there is really a wealth of uh, plugins. Right. right. Um, mm -hmm. So um, I one little thing that I that I it, it's often the little things that make the difference. But one thing that I particularly like if is you if you edit the HTML, it will automatically render uh, the colors HTML colors as a square colors, so you see the actual uh, color that is being used, and that these are the kinds of uh, little plugins that um, offer these capabilities. And um, yep, it's it's a little bit like Delphi. I think once you are used to that. Um, it's easy to, it's it's hard to uh, do a step back. Yeah, there, there is, for example, one extension which is called Live Share that allows you to perform uh, like pair programming with another colleague that is elsewhere uh, through the internet. So uh, you can have several people write on the same code at the same time. Okay, this is uh, very, very useful, especially in these times where everyone is working remotely. So, you know, the ecosystem of uh, plugins is, is very, very big is like in the old times of Delphi when there were 
a lot of components and things like that. So, uh, you know, it's nice once you get used to, to this, of course, it's a different tool. So there is a, a learning curve that you will need to, uh, to get. But also there are extensions. If you search for Delphi, there is, for example, this is the key map and that contains all the keys that you might use to, okay? So all the shortcuts that you are used to, they are migrated here. There are also Delphi themes, so you can change the, the to the colors that you might uh, use to, okay? And there are bookmarks and things like that, okay? So, you know, it's, it's a very, um, it, it evolves very fast. Every month, uh, there is a new uh, release with a lot of uh, new things. And it's very stable and, is very small, is uh, like 100 megabytes in, in size that you can install anywhere. You have uh, also the ability to work on uh, Visual Studio Code Live, uh, I think it's Live Spaces in GitHub. You can uh, uh, write code inside the browser. You don't even need a computer. As long as you have a browser like a Chromebook, you can write code there or in an iPad. Okay, so it's, it's, it's very. Uh, um versatile versatile so you can uh, write code anywhere so in my opinion uh, no matter what even uh, you don't want to use tms web core my recommendation is that you start using visual studio code uh, for any kind of other development because uh, it's, it's like it's getting to be like this in the industry for many kinds of developments I see a uh, question from Neil. Is there any similar concept to the shared BPL um, directory? I think, uh, Jose, this yes. is... Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I mean, applications are not going to be using dynamically BPLs, okay? The, the TWCL, which is the, the counterpart of a BPL, is compiling inside, okay? So there is no such concept of an application using BPLs or even at the same time uh, sharing a folder where all those BPLs are, are located. Because, uh, you know, being a JavaScript, they need to be on a specific folder. They cannot be anywhere on your disk. They need to be on a specific folder because it's JavaScript code that is loaded inside the designer. So uh, it, there is no such concept. So maybe later you can contact us offline to explain what is going to, to be your actual need for that um maybe there is something that we can do uh, on on that area okay another um in this uh, discussion about uh, delphi versus um visual studio code um one little tidbit that i wanted to share with you is that um the tool that you are looking at right now which is the tms web academy is uh, actually an um, it's a web core web client application. So this uh, tool, this this web application, was created fully in uh, TMS Web Core. It was um, done by our colleague uh, Bradley, and um, Bradley is um, totally new to um, Delphi. And um, when Bradley started many months ago, uh, Bradley was actually given the choice. Um, see what you're most comfortable with, uh, whether it's Visual Studio Code or whether it's uh, Delphi, freedom of choice. And so um, it was already quickly that uh, Bradley um, said, okay, I feel most comfortable in Visual Studio Code, so I will develop this um, TMS Web Academy application um, all the time fully in um, TMS Web Core for Visual Studio Code. Um, Bradley is um, younger than us, so maybe that's um, also related. Um, so I think it's a matter of taste as well. And um, young younger people tend to um, adopt it way faster than uh, people who, like us uh, who have been in uh, who have been working with Delphi for like 25 years. Um, but the, the good thing is that there is a freedom of choice, and so uh, you can choose um, the platform and the IDE that you like. Another question that I see is about uh, seeing um, data at design time. 
And uh, yes, that is correct. Uh, as Jose pointed out, what you see on the form designer in Visual Studio Code is all the real web view thing. Um, so um, if you would drop a DB grid and an X data data set, and you connect that X data data set to your X data server, and it is hooked up to that DB grid, it will fetch uh, the records and it will show these in the DB grid. Um, and yeah, all it's actually because the designer itself, it is, um, it is a, an it is all running in the browser and it is uh, almost identical to the real web application running in a real uh, browser when it uh, gets deployed the same applies for example uh, when you drop a uh, mapping component like um, the integrated light version i would say for google maps uh, as soon as you specify your API key, um, it will use the Google Maps um, API and render the map right there in the form designer. And the same applies to FNC Maps uh, that offers meanwhile a myriad of uh, mapping services. All of them uh, will run live in uh, your browser. In the designer, in the designer I mean and also in the browser, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a question here on the section <laughs> for questions. Could you tell about limitations you expect with FNC components in Visual Studio Code? I guess you are asking between Rust Studio and Visual Studio Code. So the answer is, is no, uh, in the sense that uh, the nice thing about FNC technology is that it's like a cross library uh, framework. So, uh, sorry, uh, more is like a cross tool or development tool framework so um, all those components work uh, exactly the same on all those environments so everything you see on visual studio code is the same on uh, rust studio and vice versa okay. the code base is actually a um, hundred percent identical um, whether you um, will use the fnc components in uh, Visual Studio Code with TMS Web Core is exactly the same as uh, using that FNC component from the Delphi IDE to create um, a Web Core application. So it's 100% um, uh, identical code. Okay, not sure if there are any more questions. Thanks, uh, Richard, for your comment that you liked this uh, presentation. Thanks also, uh, Thomas. Thanks for being here. Thanks for your time. So we are um, working hard to um, provide this beta version so you can uh, get started yourself. Um, Actually, not only with um, the package support, which is uh, this major feature in uh, 1.3, but at the same time, uh, all the new features and capabilities that have been added to uh, WebCore 1.7 for Delphi uh, in the core framework, uh, things like um, the local file support, the USB support, the enhancements to uh, the grid, all these uh, capabilities are already part of uh, 1.3. So uh, that's maybe also something uh, important to remark is that the web core framework itself is also 100% identical between um, the Delph, what is used in the Delphi IDE and what is used in the Visual Studio Code IDE. And actually, Jose, uh, I think also important to mention is that you can exchange um, projects that you create in uh, WebCore for Visual Studio Code with Delphi. So um, mm -hmm. one day, or if you have a team, you can have uh, developers using your the Delphi IDE and other developers uh, on the same project using the Visual Studio Code uh, IDE. So in terms mm -hmm. of deploy file, it is uh, based on, on actually the same um, file uh, structure. Yeah, exactly. This is why, for example, you are seeing here Win32, 
okay this is mac os and the target platform is win32 because this is inherited from the deep rock that, that you can uh, use in RAL studio and vice versa okay? so you can move from one environment to to the other okay um not sure Okay, and question from uh, Ulrich uh, for TMS Webcore. Can you provide updates more often for fixing issues? Um, uh, okay, the frequency of updates of Webcore for Delphi versus uh, Visual Studio Code. Uh, I agree that um, indeed, um, especially from 1.2, um, this has been somewhat uh, slower than uh, it was for Delphi. And that was uh, mainly uh, because, uh, Jose, it was a huge effort to um, add this package support. And this, um, I think this uh, took so much energy and effort uh, to get that up and running. Um, and then we continued to work, to work hard on this. Uh, and, and with laser focus uh, that we, yeah, um, that it slipped through, uh, that we didn't offer as many uh, updates. Actually, the goal is um, to bring the two 100% um, in sync. And, and that at some point when there is a core framework um, improvement or bug fix, uh, that we can release these uh, updates at the same time. Also, at some point, um, we want to uh, come to the same version number so that um, it will become crystal clear um, what features are in what version and what bug fixes uh, come in, in, in what version so that it, it's becoming clear. But now, of course, um, we are building up a lot of things in Visual Studio Code. And that's why it uh, gets its current uh, version number scheme. With respect to uh, Lazarus, I see a question from uh, Edward. What about uh, FNC for Lazarus? Uh, so at this moment, there is a uh, technical issue. So you can actually install the FNC components in Lazarus for creating uh, desktop applications with uh, the Lazarus IDE. So from a Lazarus IDE, uh, be it on Windows, Mac, or Linux, you can create um, desktop applications with the FNC components. The issue there, the technical issue there, is uh, a difficulty in uh, with the Lazarus IDE to register a component for uh, allowing it to be used simultaneously in a classic LCL application or in a web core application. Uh, so once we managed, and this will require some uh, changes in the IDE itself, uh, but once that technical bottleneck is uh, handled, it should also open uh, the gate, so to speak, to uh, allow FNC to be used not only for desktop applications, LCL applications, but also for uh, web core applications. But as as I mentioned, it's an, as a technical issue in the IDE, so it's not 100% in our hands to um, solve that bottleneck. The, the people from um, the FPC and Lazarus uh, team are aware of that. It's a matter of uh, allocating uh, the time and setting priorities to uh, facilitate uh, that we can do that. Thanks, uh, Mark, for your um, comment. Thanks, Edward, for being here for your time. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. If there are no more, yes, um, Ulrich, the plan is to roll out the beta so you can uh, have it in your hands 
and um, start uh, exploring it and uh, give us feedback so we can polish it um, for a release. And Jose, I think we should be able to uh, aim for May for a release, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. I think that's a, a realistic uh, goal. Uh, so we count. Actually, that's an, really an invitation that we count on your um, feedback on uh, the beta to get it in an as good as possible shape um, for release. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think if there are no more questions, um, I think we can conclude here. Not sure, Jose, if you have any concluding words. No, I'm, I'm very excited to see what uh, people can can start doing with uh, components. So, you know, it's very exciting because those components are won't be limited to, to you know, uh, to a specific operating system, our web components. And even you can wrap existing uh, libraries that are open source and you can create the wrapper for TMS web core and you know we can have a nice ecosystem where there are uh, there is a lot of new components that can be used right away and so you know and pushing a lot in order to get this functionality out in the in the market just to see what uh, people can can do with it exactly there is a wealth of uh, libraries and functionality in the web world uh, so there is lots and lots of things to do um, to actually um, offer the building blocks to um, enable you to be extremely productive in uh, bringing all kinds of features together for creating uh, web applications exactly okay um, i think we can conclude here thanks uh, everyone for uh, attending, for being here. Um, I think technically everything is uh, fine that we will have a recording. And so um, my colleague will be sending out emails to everyone registered for the webinar. So you can also see afterwards um, the webinar again and others who couldn't make it can still see it. So thanks everyone. Thanks Jose for your presentation. It was excellent. Thank I you. Liked it. I enjoyed it and um, we are here. We are also uh, ready to offer you more. So if you have uh, ideas, suggestions for um, specific topics on uh, WebCore for Visual Studio Code or WebCore in general to be covered, uh, we are of course listening and uh, let us know what topic you are interested in and we'll uh, see to work out a uh, webinar in the near future.